Alhamdulillah Innal hamdalillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa natubu ilayhi Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina Man yahdillahu fala mudilla lah Wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فيا عباد الله أوصيكم بتقوى الله وطاعته إن الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف ضرب الله مثلا كلمة طيبة كشجرة طيبة أصلها ثابت وفرعها في السماء تؤتي أكلها كل حين بإذن ربها ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس لعلهم يتذكرون ومثل كلمة خبيثة كشجرة خبيثة اجتثت من فوق الأرض ما لها من قرار صدق الله العظيم وقال الله تعالى قول معروف ومغفرة خير من صدقة يتبعها أذى صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والكلمة الطيبة صدقة وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يسروا ولا تعسروا وسكنوا ولا تنفروا صدق رسول الله ونطق حبيب الله May Allah's blessings, mercy and peace be upon us We thank Allah We believe in Him We rely upon Him alone we ask for his help. We seek refuge in him from the evils of our actions. Dear respected brothers and sisters, our holy book, the Quran, essentially aims to distinguish truth from falsehood and to make truth prevail over falsehood. Our Lord wants his servants to strive for this cause with all their capacities. For this reason, he often makes comparisons about what is good and evil, what is right and wrong, and the fate of those who choose the right and those who are on the side of falsehood. While the qualities of believers are mentioned in the Qur'an, the states of deniers are also described. While revealing this distinction, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads us to contemplate and reason through a lot of examples. The wisdom and advice in the examples are actually a road map for the servant to reach to the level of human perfection. In the first verse I read, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advises us on the way to reach this ideal with a very concise and perfect example. Our ability to speak is one of the qualities that make us truly human and make us valuable. Human relations, even civilization, can only be established and developed on the basis of beautiful, true, useful, 
and reliable words. We know that our Lord has divided humanity into different nations so that they can meet and know one another and created them with different temperaments. If the main element of this adaptation and unity is dialogue, it must be built on pleasantness, grace, affection, and truthfulness. In this sense, in the Quran, kinds of beautiful words, such as qawlun layyin, qawlun karim, qawlun maysur, or qawlun ma'roof are mentioned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes to us the superiority of the beautiful and the good over the ugly and evil with an impressive analogy. At the same time, this essentially means the superiority of faith over disbelief and the superiority of truth over falsehood. According to the verse I mentioned, a good word is like a good tree whose roots are firm and deep in the earth and whose branches are in the sky. The tree which represents the good word always bears fruit with the permission of its Lord. On the other hand, a bad word is like an evil tree uprooted from the ground and unable to stand. The example in question has been mentioned in the context of pointing out the basic distinction between believers and those who keep their promises to Allah and those who are unbelievers and unjust. The good tree which represents the good word, truth and true faith has two main features. It is strong, and fruitful. Firstly, a good tree is solid. It is unshakable and indestructible even in the strongest winds because its roots are deep in the ground. On the other hand, a bad tree representing falsehood is not solid because its roots are on the surface of the earth. It has no fixed place and basis, just as falsehood is deprived of a sound basis and proof in the face of truth. Therefore, it is prone to swaying even in the lightest winds. And evil and idle words are bound to perish, similar to a rotten and weak tree. وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ the truth has come and falsehood has vanished. Indeed, falsehood is bound to vanish. There is no place for falsehood, evil and ugliness where right, goodness and beauty in word and deed are strongly represented. Secondly, a good tree is fertile. It always bears fruit. Good word is like a tree that bears fruit continuously. Good word always brings goodness, love, tranquility, and order. It prevents conflict and chaos and makes understanding, peace, and affection permanent. As a matter of fact, our Prophet ﷺ managed to keep his companions with him in the most difficult days, thanks to his soft language and mercy, and protected Muslims from division. In Surah Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the Prophet as follows. So, O Prophet, it is through mercy from Allah that you are gentle to them. Had you been rough and hard-hearted, they would have dispersed from around you. Word is more than just a word of mouth. In short, it expresses a stance, belief, and teaching 
in lifestyle. The life of the prophets are full of the best examples of the good tree that represents the good word. It is essentially the prophetic stance and mission that we should also follow. In many interpretations, it is stated that what is meant by the good word in the verse is La ilaha illallah, the essence of Tawheed. As a matter of fact, right after the example given, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيُضِلُّ اللَّهُ الظَّالِمِينَ وَيَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ God will give firmness to those who believe in the firmly rooted word, both in this world and the hereafter. But those that do evil, he leaves to stray. God does whatever he will. On the other hand, a rotten tree represents all kinds of words, thoughts, and behaviors that stand against the prophets and their messages and try to neutralize these messages. A bad tree can benefit from neither the soil nor the rain that gives it life, since its root remains on the surface of the soil. Similarly, bad speech is essentially devoid of any usefulness and effect, since it is not based on solid evidence and cannot pass the test of reason and conscience. Therefore, bad words and falsehood have no benefit either for themselves or for humanity. In one of his hadiths, our beloved Prophet والسلام, makes a parallel analogy to the one in the Quran when describing the Muslim character. He likens the believer to a tree whose leaves do not fall and always bears fruit. That is the date tree. The vital importance of this tree for believers living in the arid desert environment is indisputable. A believer is like such a tree in the eyes of Allah's messenger. With his thoughts, words, and actions, he enlightens and benefits his environment. Just as everyone benefits from a tree that bears fruit, a believer is also a sought after and valued person, person in his or her, in, or her environment. On the other hand, just as a tree needs care, such as irrigation and pruning to stay alive, so is the faith in the hearth. If the believer does not feed himself with beneficial knowledge, good deeds, dhikr, and contemp contemplation, it is natural for the Muslim identity to degenerate. Our Prophet, والسلام, the symbol of hilm or gentleness, used the power of good word in the most effective way. He even prayed for people who insulted him by saying, O oh Allah, guide them because they don't know the truth and he treated them with kindness. This high moral morality of his has some, sometimes been instrumental in his enemies gathering around him with love and faith. In other words, just as a beneficial tree always gives its fruit, his good word also gave its fruit, bringing, bringing goodness, blessing, and peace to those around him. God wants us to have this responsibility as well. While listing the qualification of the servants with whom he is pleased, he says, the servants of the Rahman are those who walk on the earth humbly, and when the ignorant people speak to them, they reply peacefully. Dear brothers and sisters, a believer is obliged 
to say the best of words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who can be better in words than the one who calls towards Allah and acts righteously and says, I am one of those who submit themselves to Allah. The word of the believer is gentle, truthful, heartwarming and reliable. It is constructive, not destructive. The word of the believer is healing for the soul. As the messenger stated, the Muslim is the one from whose tongue and hand the people are safe. The believer stays away from words that lead to unbelief, shirk, or rebellion. A believer should pursue good and beauty under all circumstances. If he does not have the opportunity to respond positively to someone who asks for help, he should at least say encouraging, soothing, and kind words. He should try not to break their heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِمَّا تُعْجِضَنَّ عَنْهُمُ بُتِغَاءَ رَحْمَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكَ تَرْجُوهَا فَقُلْ لَهُمْ قَوْلًا مَيْسُورًا But if, while seeking some bounty that you expect from your Lord, you turn them down, then at least speak some word of comfort to them. If we don't aspire, aspire, aspire to good word, the devil is waiting to make mischief among us. If we abandon the good word that produces the fruit of kindness, love and friendship, then disorder, hostility and heartache are inevitable. Our Lord says in the Quran, وَقُلْ لِعِبَادِي يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَنْزَغُ بَيْنَهُمْ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ كَانَ لِلْإِنسَانِ عَدُوًا مُبِينًا Tell my servants that they should speak that which is the best. Surely shaitan creates discord among them. Indeed, shaitan is an open enemy to mankind. In the words of our Prophet, a person who believes either speaks good or remains silent. A good and correct word based on reason, conscience, and ev evidence brings good deeds. Good words and good deeds that seek the pleasure of Allah reach society, affects it, develops and beautifies it in a good way, just like the branches of a fruitful tree. The importance of the good word is much more vital in the in the call, the truth, justice, and Allah's approval. Our Lord commanded Prophet Musa and Prophet Harun to speak good words, even in the most difficult conditions during their sacred duties. Idhaba ila fir'awna innahu tagha faqula lahu qawla al-layyina al-allahu yatadhakkaroon Go, both of you, to Pharaoh. He has indeed transgressed all limits. So speak to him in soft words. Maybe he accepts the advice or fears Allah. Regardless of the outcome, the first and most important condition in the dialogue is to, is to approach the addressee with nice and gentle words. Is a positive result and good will be achieved from a dialogue. This will be only be achieved through a beautiful and constructive style. Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mawridati al hasanah. The Quran presents wisdom and good advice as two effective forces in the invitation to, to the path of the truth. In other verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم Repel evil with what is best and you will see that the one you had mutual enmity with him will turn as if he were a close friend. As the verse reminds us once again, nice and gentle words contain a powerful potential to transform people in a positive way. Just as a fruit bearing tree heals the body, a good word heals the soul and hearts. So today our duty as human beings and Muslims is not to enslave spirituality to materialism, what is eternal to what is temporary, and truth to lie. It is always to follow right and truth, beautiful and correct words. May Allah grant us all the ability to, to adapt the good word based on truth, wisdom, and conscience as a principle for ourselves. Amen. ألا إن أحسن الكلام وأبلغ النظام كلام الله الملك العزيز العلام كما قال الله تبارك وتعالى في الكلام وإذا قرئ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا لعلكم ترحمون الحمد لله حمد الكاملين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين تعظيما لنبيه وتكريما لفخامة شان شرف صفيه فقال عز وجل من قائل مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ارض عن الأربعة الخلفاء الراشدين سيدنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى بقية الصحابة والتابعين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين اللهم ألف بين قلوب المسلمين اللهم أيد كلمة الحق والدين اللهم وحد كلمة المسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بأنوار محبتك وذكرك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أحينا حياة طيبة بالصحة والسلامة والعافية في الدين والدنيا والآخرة اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والإصيان واجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم توفنا مسلما وألحقنا بالصالحين اللهم احشرنا في زمرة الصالحين اللهم ارحم أمة محمد رحمة عامة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين عباد الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالأحسن إن الله يأمر بال إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون أقيم الصلاة